Grace Bible Church, welcome back to another edition of Living by the Book. Pastor Rick, good to have you. Thank you. Uh, this is an exciting episode for us because we've uh, we got a little equipment upgrade. So yeah. hopefully, hopefully it's noticeably different if you're watching this video and you've watched them previously. Hopefully our faces are more clear, which, you know, maybe that's a negative. I don't know. You may have not noticed in the previous <laughs> recordings, but uh, I'm somewhat bald. <laughs> and this probably stands right. The now. fuzzy picture may, may yeah. have made it look like yeah. there's more. Yeah. There's so, more stuff up there. There you go. Uh, and <laughs> you, maybe you thought I was bald, and it actually turns out I still have a full head of hair. <laughs> so hopefully this isn't a curse on anyone. Uh, no, I, I, as always, I'm, I'm uh, grateful for, <laughs> for the opportunity to ask you a question. Uh, this this question I think is going to be. I think this will be a really helpful question for a lot of people. I think it's something that everybody faces at some point. Um, and, yeah. You know, John, in the book of 1 John, uh, he says that for the believer, the the commandments of God are not burdensome, right? They're not meant to be a burden. The idea being that obedience for a Christian is not something that weighs heavily on us. It's something that we delight in doing, right? Because our heart is set on the will of God. We we want to serve our master. We want to please our father. Uh, at the same time, there there are those times in life where God is calling us to do, to do something that we don't want to do, and that's hard. And that may be, you know... Uh, a momentary act of obedience, but it may be a, it may be a, a bigger you know life life altering upending decision that we have to make, and we see where God is directing us, and yet we recognize that there will be you know dramatic implications for us. And so right. the question really is, how do you how how where does that heart that delights in obedience come from, especially in those situations where that obedience is going to be costly and painful in some way? Yeah. Well, that's a great question. I think that as we look at our own struggle um, with the will of God, mm -hmm. that often, um, even though we know that God's will is good and acceptable and perfect, according to Romans 12, 2, um, we don't always feel it. We don't always agree with that emotionally, even though intellectually we say yes god's will is always good it's always perfect uh, but getting emotionally to where our minds are uh, and our spiritual um understanding is sometimes there's a grinding of gears in order to get there and i think that um it's comparable to you know when we're raising our children we told them that uh they need to obey what they're told to do mm -hmm. Uh, immediately, without delay, um, completely, so no partial obedience suffices. Ninety yeah, percent, and then it. joyfully, yeah, with a happy heart. Right, right, right. Um, all don't three of love, those. Don't you love that phrase? With a happy heart. With a happy heart. Happy heart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the, all three of those are hard. Mm -hmm. The happy heart's the hardest. Yeah, Being joyful for sure. about it, because sure. there are times when you know, yeah, we don't have a happy heart. We struggle with that and that's our flesh that's our faith that's uh, it's a it's an issue of it does speak to the issue of relationship which i think is so key in this our relationship with the lord is part of what enables us to see um his will as good acceptable and perfect and mm -hmm. not burdensome mm -hmm. you know that passage mm -hmm. in first john five which is where that comes from um says, um, by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and observe his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. Now, that word can be interpreted to mean that they're not um, something that you uh, wrestle with that mm -hmm. it's there it's easy uh -huh. and of course jesus did talk about my yoke is easy my burden is light right. right and so there is this understanding and, and the reason by the way that his yoke is easy and his burden is light is because he's doing the heavy lifting mm -hmm. right. right it's his yoke right right and he's yoking us together with him and he's the one pulling the bulk of the weight. Yeah. Right? So that's yeah. why his yoke is easy. Yeah. It's easy for us. Right. Right. Because yeah. he's doing the heavy lifting. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to the fact that sometimes the, the commandments of God, the will of God, um, obedience to God and what he's calling us to do 
it's really hard. But I think even though we recognize the difficulty of it, I don't think that verse means it's not difficult for us. Sure. Yeah. The word for uh, burdensome there Mm -hmm. is used elsewhere uh, in Scripture to refer to something that is savage or cruel Hmm. or mean. Yeah. For instance, if you look over, I think it's, uh, I can't remember what verse it's in. Um, I know it's in Acts 20. It's when Paul is talking to the Ephesian elders. And he says, um, uh, verse 29. I know that after my departure, burdensome wolves will come in Mm -hmm. among you, not sparing. That's the same word. Or same root. It's not the same form. Right. But same right. same basic yeah. root meaning. Lexically, yeah. that word mm. is the word that's used for burdensome in first John five. Mm. Right? So what John is saying is that we for we know that we love God when what his will is for us is not viewed by us as savage, fierce, mm-hmm. cruel. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. he's not being cruel to us. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, you know, you love God when the relationship with God allows you to understand that he's a loving father yeah. who always does what's best for us. Right. And when we tell our children, obey immediately, joyfully, um, and completely, we're saying to them, you have to trust me that when I'm giving you an instruction to do, it is for the best. Mm-hmm. It is not cruel. We're not being brutal. We're not being ridiculous or there is reason we're telling you to do this. Yeah, sure. And in, in our perception of God's will and we look at even God's word and we look at our lives and the word of God is calling us to do something that our lives, it was going to really cost us something. Mm -hmm. We look at a little sliver of the picture um, almost like if we could pixelate God's word, yeah, we're looking at one or two little pixels, right? And those pixels might be um, something that is really like it's a, a putrid-looking color. Mm. It's like, oh, what could, what possible purpose could this, these pixels contribute to a, a whole picture that is lovely? Yeah. And we don't yeah. get it. We don't see it. Right. Uh, it's a putrid color. It may be a, um, you know, a wretched green, mm. right? And and something that would right. be the consequence of retching. Right. And we say, <laughs> yes. how could that possibly contribute to, you know, uh, um, a beautiful picture altogether? Uh, but when we know God, we say, okay, it will. Mm-hmm. We, we know it will. Yeah. Um, I remember when my um, my family moved here 16 and a half years ago, whatever yeah. it was. Um, my children had a real hard time. Sure. They thought God was cruel, that he was savage hmm. doing this to us, to us. Yeah. Specifically, yeah. was it the charge? Right. How could God do this to us? Hmm. They didn't like what they were experiencing. Yeah. Um, and... And the um, um, the lancing of of that of that perspective mm-hmm. and the oozing that came out was demonstrative of their lack of confidence that God's purposes for them were for the good. Yeah, sure. Right? They they mm-hmm. didn't see it. Mm-hmm. And so they they spewed, and I dealt with it. I mentored and discipled and, and argued for the Lord with an apologetic, not saying sorry, but defending what God has done yeah. as good and acceptable and perfect, that you don't see it now, but you will. Mm-hmm. And then a year later, they were on the absolute opposite. What a glorious mm-hmm. blessing it is for God to have brought us here. Yeah. And they yeah. turned completely around, 180, yeah. and they were praising God for the blessing of being at grace. Yeah. It's because they, they'd find their experience to California summer. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. 115. Yeah, 120 degrees. <laughs> yeah. But 
the um, the the issue was they didn't see the end from the beginning. God right. knows the whole thing. He knows yeah. what he's doing. So when he's telling us to do something, he's telling us to do something in in confidence that it's not savage, it's not brutal, it's mm-hmm. not cruel. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's good and acceptable and perfect. And even though we don't see it, we can't understand it, and it seems so counterintuitive to how we're feeling, we know that if we obey God and do what it says, yeah, it will result in his blessing. Mm-hmm. Um, if we... Uh, you know, are, are get into a relationship with somebody that is not a biblically responsible relationship, and we come to the awareness that no, I need to, I need to um, get out of this relationship. Right. Um, that it's going to result in something good. Yeah. I heard a story this morning of somebody that was um, driving a car for hire, and mm-hmm. and one of the passengers was a bodybuilder, and. Um, uh, they had just gotten saved about six months before, yeah. and this person witnessed to them, and and the bodybuilder said, "Yeah, yeah, my life used to be completely around the gym and diet, and my body was the most important thing." But she pulled out a Bible, and and she said, "Yeah, but I have my Bible here," and she opened it up, and it was marked up, mm-hmm. and this obviously was studying the Bible. Yeah, and she said, "But you know, I'm really struggling with what I'm doing as to whether it's really the appropriate thing for a mm-hmm. Christian to be doing." Mm-hmm. And she had to come to the persuasion that the alternative to neglecting the Word of God yeah. and doing what she wants to do, yeah. the alternative to that would bring her into greater blessing, sure. even though that it would change her life radically. Right. right? But right. she was going to obey what she saw in the Bible mm-hmm. as what the priorities of a believer ought to be. Yeah. And that resulted in further blessing mm-hmm. in, in, her, in her life. Yeah. We would assume, because we know God. Now right. we don't know at the end of the story, but sure, if she were to obey God, it would always bring blessing. Mm-hmm. So we, you know, that that passage talks about the the fact that we know we know we love God when we obey His commandments and we don't consider them cruel, mm. unbearable. Yeah, uh, which is what the idea of burdensome is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not that it can't be a burden, right? To do what's right, right? Right. Because it might be hard. Yeah. I had a friend in Chicago when I was a resident. Uh, I was about twenty-five years old, I think. Uh, and this guy was a mechanic, and his boss wanted him to put used parts into repairs mm-hmm. and sell them as new mm. f- factory parts, right? Right. And he finally said, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. So he went to his boss and says, I can't do that. And the boss says, well, if you can't do that, you're going to be fired. Yeah. And he fired him. He fired this mechanic for wanting to be honest. Right. Right. And the mechanic came in and said, I don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, I, I, uh, I needed that job. I don't have a mm-hmm. job. Mm-hmm. And, and he started a business. He started mm. his own company, and the Lord just prospered him. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But he did the right thing. Mm. He knew what to do. And the commandments of the Lord, with reference to honesty, were not viewed by him as something cruel, right. even though it was a burden to do yeah. it. Yeah, and it cost him. It cost yeah. him. It was costly. Yeah. It was cost. It was cost. Mm. Um, you know, you have to think of those brothers who went to burn at the stake, you know, in the Reformation. Yeah. You're a, yeah. Uh, burning at the stake is a pretty t- tough thing to do. Yeah. It's a it's a burden, yeah. right, to yeah. do that. But it wasn't cruel for God to call them to do that because they love God. Mm-hmm. They knew that God was not cruel. He's right. not a cruel God. Right. Um, you know, it talks about in various places, like Psalm 33, um, um, what, uh, boy, uh, and I, I'm, I'm sorry. I got the chapter. I don't have verse. That's all right. Um, but the chapter's pretty close. It's, yeah, well, it's we not can, bad. We can zoom in on it. Um, oh, yeah. Here it goes. Um, the counsel in verse 11. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of what? Of his heart. Of his heart. From generation to generation. Hmm. The plans of his heart. Give God a heart. He's got a heart. Yeah. 
not, you know, in the in the yeah. in the in the metaphorical sense, of course. I mean, right. God doesn't; He's not flesh and blood. But right. but the heart talks about the seat of your emotion, mm-hmm. and from the seat of the emotion of God come His plans. Yeah, and it, it, He's not a cold, cruel administrator mm-hmm. that just strokes a pen and signs right. people's lives away yeah. without a consideration of yeah. how it's going inf- uh, how it's going to impact them. Yeah. It's not like a bean counter in heaven, right? Just hacking yeah. off divisions, right, or whatever. Yeah. He has a heart yeah. for us. Yeah. And his plans come out of the heart. There's that passage that talks about I know the plans that I have uh for you. Mhm. Not plans for evil. Right. You know, of course, that's referring to Israel specifically and the fulfillment of the of the Abraham covenant and other things mm-hmm. that are associated with right. uh, that whole context. Right. But it demonstrates that God's purposeful. He is compassionate mm-hmm. and his desire is to bless his mm-hmm. people. And when we know that about God, when he calls upon us to do something that is really tough, really hard to do yeah. in obedience to him. Yeah. It gives us the ability to have a happy heart. Yeah. To be joyful mm. in response, even though it's grueling, difficult, costly, sacrificial. Still, the love that we have for God and the confidence that his heart toward us is a good heart and that he desires to bless us. That has to be what prevails. Mm-hmm. We can't allow what he's calling us to do because we don't understand it, because we only see these two little pixels, right? To then use that to extrapolate the fact that God is not good; He's not; right. He doesn't love me. He's, right? You know that that's such a uh, a, a, a um, unacceptable, silly, mm-hmm. irresponsible right. way to approach how God is leading right. in our lives. Right. The Bible tells us to do the opposite. We start with what we know of God's character, mm-hmm. and we apply that to our situations. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, and you kind of you you've you alluded to that several right. times. I mean, really, the answer to this question, and you've said it in several different ways. You know, is is you you have to go back to who God is. It's about His character. About it's about yeah. knowing who He is. Yes, He has a heart. He He's a God of love and compassion. Mm-hmm. He He does work all things for the good of those who love Him. Right. Have been called according to His purpose. You know, those are true statements because God is is a God who loves His children and and desires what's best for them. And oftentimes what is best for the child involves some pain and frustration and, and some burdens that have to be borne. But mm-hmm. like you said, it's he's working towards this incredible end picture that we can't see. Right. And we're called to, to go and look at him and say, he is trustworthy. You can you can trust him in right. this. You can trust him in this. Right. Yeah. His faithfulness endures. Mm-hmm. And you know that... Um, you know, even I, I'm, I'm thinking of, uh, actually, actually, my wife and I were talking about this, and, and she was mentioning how that, that, um, that the Lord in Lamentations mm-hmm. and other places, Jeremiah right. is referring right. to this, and in Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah, talks about how that, um, you know, when you go into dispersion, mm-hmm. uh, I want you to go into dispersion, and I want you to build cities and plant vineyards and, and live your normal life. Right. Right. Faithfully right. toward me. Right? Stay faithful. Because I'm going to deliver you out of that. Mm-hmm. Seventy years later, right. I'm going to bring it back. So do right. what I've called you to do and be faithful. Yep. Even though you're in deportation, right. in a foreign land, all these right. kind of things, right. just stay faithful. Yeah. I've got this. Yeah. And that's where Jeremiah is talking about. Uh, great is thy faithfulness. Mm-hmm. Every mm-hmm. morning your mercies are new. Right. 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 And, and, and that really is this passage in Psalm 34 or 33 mm-hmm. uh, talks about for the word of the Lord is upright and all his work is done in faithfulness. Yeah. Yep. That's our God. Mm. So when yeah, we're maybe. called upon to do things that are difficult and he tells us to do something that is going to change our life or that we discover in his word that, oh man, yep. I have to do that. Or, you know, you think of the, the high school kid who's got an infatuation with some uh, unsaved boyfriend or girlfriend, yeah. and they realize I can't be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. I can't right. be dating this person. Right? They're they're not 
a believer. Right. And you break up with them. Yeah. It's a burden. Yeah. It's hard to do. Yeah. But it's not burdensome. In other words, right. that is not a cruel thing for God to ask you to do. Right. It actually has your best interest at heart. Right. Right. So yeah. there's the difference yeah. between something being a burden and something being burdensome. burdensome. Yeah. If if I can yep. draw that distinction yep. succinctly. Yeah. No, and I think that's I think that's a helpful distinction. I think that you know it brings clarity to that verse, but I think it also it makes it very easy to see that in real application. I think I think many people have experienced that they feel the burden of something. But oftentimes when we got on the other side of it, we, re- we look back and realize that was not burdensome. Like you said, it was not malicious. It wasn't uh, harmful. It wasn't fierce. It was it, cruel. It was, yep. it was actually good. And I, just, I couldn't see it in the middle of it. And it, as parents, we need to maintain that standard mm-hmm. of expecting our children to obey immediately, right. uh, completely, and joyfully. Mm-hmm. But have a heart. Yeah. That sure. sometimes it's a burden to them. Yeah. And... Hmm. help them develop the joy yeah. in doing yeah, that's what's good. right. That's good. You know. Yep. But maintain the standard. Don't yep. give it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Know. No, that's helpful. Don't let them complain You're and right. gripe and, you know, whine yeah. and all yeah. that kind of stuff. No, no. Yeah. That's not right. Yeah, but we can do so sympathetically because we also know what it's like to... It's easy for us to struggle. complain and gripe yeah, and whine. For sure. For right? Sure. When God's calling us to do something. Yep. Amen. No, that's helpful, Pastor. I appreciate that. I know... Uh, that many people in our church are, you know, there's always, there's always hardships, you know, in any church, the, a church is a place yeah. where there are many hardships and uh, our desire is that, is that our people will be looking to the Lord. Amen. That they'd be, Amen. they'd be seeing their faithful God. So church, we hope that this has been an encouragement to you, either for you or for someone that you know, that, that the key is to be pointing them to the character of God and reminding them that he, he's in control and knows what, he knows what he's doing. So, Amen. so church, we love you. We're praying for you wherever you might be, or whatever you're doing today. Uh, we pray that this would this would help point you back to the Lord and His faithfulness and His goodness. I pray that that would sustain you this day and many more. So we love you, church. We'll see you next time, next week, on another episode of Living by the Book. Take care.